Hello, everyone. Welcome to MT4 Professional. My name is Randy Lindsay. I'm your host today. Today, we have a very special uh, topic. We're going to be coming to you. This is a live presentation. We're going to be talking about our reliance on lagging indicators and why we need to stop doing that. It's a very special interview with uh, Roger Corey. He is a Market Forecasting Academy CEO and founder, and he's with us in our uh, um, shop today uh, for a live interview. Um, he's uh, traveling abroad, but uh, we have him linked in, and we're going to be talking with him very shortly. I just want to do a very quick introduction to us. My name is Randy Lindsay. I am your trade coach, the operations director here at MT4 Professional, and my co-host uh, in crime is uh, Claudio Cardinal. He is our product development director and all things technology guru. Today's presentation, like I said, we're going to be having a live interview with Roger Corey. He is the founder and CEO of Market Forecasting Academy. Um, Roger has established this institution uh, to mentor and train investors on his innovative approach to the world's financial markets. And he calls this demand imbalance arbitrage. Uh, it identifies frequent low risk high probability opportunities where traders can profit with confidence and consistency. And he refers to that as, as peaceful profits. We're gonna be getting into that in a lot more detail a bit later, but just wanted to let you know who I'm gonna be bringing on to interview here in just a minute. And I wanna let you also know that we're gonna be making a very special free offer toward the end of our presentation today. So please stick around for that. You do not want to miss this. All right, so let's get in with the interview. So let me turn my screen share off and turn my camera on and make sure that uh, I can do that there. Let me turn my camera on. And let, let's see if we can get Roger on. All right, Roger, are you there? There we go. Awesome. Hey there. Hey, hey Randy. Roger, how are you doing? Good to see you. Good to connect. Yeah. yeah. It's fun. This is uh, it's great to be able to connect. Uh, it's it's the, as the as the world uh, continues to get ever so smaller and, and uh, we connect from anywhere in the world now. So it's really pretty amazing. Talking yeah. to you from Turkey. <laughs> You're in Turkey right now. I knew you in Europe somewhere. I'm, I'm in Turkey. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, I'm glad to see that you made so it there. Far. Okay, and you made it there safely. You look like Thanks. you're in peace. Yeah. So that's thank good. you. Yeah, I am. Yeah, little, little, still a little jet lag, but uh, we're, that, that's going to probably resolve itself over the next day or so. So we'll, we'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've got a lot of good topics to talk about today, and I've got quite a few questions I've jotted down here that I want to ask you, especially for our audience and our members around, uh, because I'm sure they want to know a little bit more about what demand imbalance arbitrage is and stuff. And so I'm going to go through and talk about this. But first, the very first question I want to ask you today if it's okay, if I go on with the questions is, you know, absolutely. Most traders depend upon technical analysis, fundamental analysis. You know, they want these things to help them make trade decisions. I am a technical trader. I rely upon technical analysis a lot to help me to, to trade, to make these decisions. Well, like most traders, consistency and failure to follow through with reliable performance is very common. You know, um, trading systems, strategies, doesn't matter what you use, even purely mechanical systems tend to fail over time. And I know that you have a really interesting take on this. Can you elaborate on that? Randy, it took me 14 years and over $300,000 in just educational costs. Not, I'm not talking about the, the mistakes I made or the stop losses. And it just that that's over and above that. To figure out that what actually moves the market is demand, right? When there's more demand, price goes up. When there's less demand, price goes down. And what's interesting is because we have a bunch of uh, buyers and sellers interacting with the market, and we're talking hundreds of thousands of buyers and sellers every day. So you see the market you know, fluctuate up and down because it's representing the physical real-time demand, right? Moment by moment. Well, it kind of hit me like a, like just, it was a, a moment of an epiphany 
when I realized, wait a second, no matter how disciplined I am at sticking to the rules of any strategy, any system, no matter how diligent, um, how consistent I am at applying myself, right? And, and being a, a, just having a great work ethic, which you know, I believe I had, that wasn't enough because I was inherently dealing with a flaw, what I call the inherent flaw actually mm. in every strategy. And that is, even if I was a price action trader, people think of price action as like the most current on the chart. So it's great, you know, uh, you follow price. The problem is, turns out price itself is a lagging indicator. Mm. And if you're using a derivative of, of, of price, like a, like a, a MACD, an RSI, a, uh, Bollinger Bands, uh, Keltner Challenge, whatever, and you name it, name the indicator uh, or advisor, robo-advisor or bot, anything. They're all basically are derived from some kind of price actions, price data. Well, all of that, or you know, maybe, maybe there's some, some news, some fundamentals, but now you have a lagging indicator on top of a lagging indicator. Mm. And so when we talk about focusing on technical analysis and it's subsets, you know, that might include Fibonacci, GAN, Elliott Wave, things like that. If people are interested in that, that's a subset of technical analysis. And you've got, you know, fundamental analysis. But those are two out of several, really eight major factors of demand that are actually impacting price. So that leaves us, left me 14 years being blindsided by these, you know, seemingly you know, hidden forces that I had to kind of uncover through a lot of uh, pain and misery, which mm. I hope to uh, alleviate for, for many people. You know, you know, whenever you've, you've gone through, a, 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 you've had a bad experience, isn't it? Like if you had a bad experience at a restaurant, you, you tend to tell people, hey, don't, you know, don't go there, right? And yet at the same time, if you had a good experience at the restaurant, you tell them that was a great meal, right? Or a movie, or it doesn't matter, right? But we, and especially today with social media, that's like, that just, you, you, it's, you know, news travels very fast. Well, for me, I have basically have become very passionate about helping others alleviate their pain. I'm, 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 I'm naturally an empath, I'm empathetic, and, I, and I, I feel with others. And, and having been where most people are, it's painful to see people have to go through something that, they, that I now know they don't mm -hmm. have to. And so I, I've become very passionate about sharing that. Now, um, what happened was a, a day at the beach to, that I, where I went to calm down <laughs> because I had had another huge disappointment. And, and what was the turning point for me was watching 17 surfers and, um, and two of them were off to the side and weren't taking very many waves, you know? And so, but I, these 15 that were clumped together taking wave after wave seemed to be the, the regulars or so I, thought, I assume they were pros. And those two that were kind of off to the side of the left were, were amateurs kind of watching and learning from the 15. Well, after about an hour, an hour and a half, I realized that interesting pattern. Every time those two surfers off to the side would take a, a, a wave, it would be a nice ride. They go almost to the shore and it was just smooth. But these other guys kept crashing and burning quite a bit. Sometimes they have a good ride. And, it, and I realized those two people are the professionals and the others are amateurs. And those two have figured out some way to analyze, identify, filter out what waves were not likely to give them a good ride, right? So, and I thought, well, wait a second. That concept, if I could figure out how to actually not go to the market looking for opportunities to make money, but instead look for opportunities that are not likely to lose money, everything mm. would change with that perspective. And that's really where everything kind of began to unfold and, you know, it snowballed into figuring out demand is the thing I've got to stick to. And so I began to develop a real-time demand analysis so that I can get a more accurate grasp. Because if I know where demand is in real time, then I know where price is going to go next because demand, demand always kind of leads first and price seems to lag behind and follows after. The trick is understanding that it's not every kind of imbalance between where price is and, and demand that really is enticing. It's kind of like if you see a fruit at the end of a tree branch, you don't want the, the, the fruit you're going to have to twist and pull and, you know, and tug and grab the branch and try to, that's a, that's a lot of work. You want the one that's ripened where you come and just kind of, as you just pull a little bit, it just plucks, comes right off and falls virtually in your, in the palm of your hand, right? That's mm -hmm. a ripened fruit. We want those opportunities. So it turns out 
80 to 90 percent of the opportunities that we see that are qualified in the surface really are not worth taking. They're going to stress us out, which is another factor we got to think about, because if I'm stressed making my profits, I'm likely going to have a deteriorated ability to maintain my focus, my objectivity, my my discipline. Right. Because anytime mm -hmm. you're under pressure, if you're running late to an important appointment right in your car, you're going to drive your car more aggressively. You're, you'll drive differently. Right. Mm -hmm. So you want to eliminate that stress, which is what I call peace, having peaceful profits, right? Mm. So that's really how I got into figuring out that, you know what, my focus on demand is what's going to help me figure out how to know the 10 or 20% that are actually ripened and have a significant enough of an imbalance that I have a very low risk, high probability opportunity to profit. So this, maybe I kind of went a little bit on the long tail there of answering that question, but hopefully that, that kind of hit what you're shooting for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you said a bunch of uh, key nuggets in there that maybe I can ask you for a little bit more clarity on. But but there was that was good. And uh, you know, you had mentioned something about uncertainties or inconsistency or inconsistent experiences in the market. Okay, um, how does your process of demand imbalance arbitrage fix that? Or how does it help traders so demand have imbalance. a consistent experience? Yes. So what demand imbalance arbitrage is, is basically an arbitrage or taking advantage is another way of saying it, right? We're taking advantage of the significant imbalances we'll see between where prices and where the actual demand is. In fact, I love to, to use a rubber band. I always like to have that by my side because it's just a great <laughs> visual analysis, right? My trusty rubber band here. Mm -hmm. So um, whenever we see, uh, let's say we have demand over here, right? And we have price over here. Well, if, if demand shifts like this, we know that price needs to kind of catch up to demand. But since demand is always kind of moving up and down, right, price is always kind of moving. So they're, they're kind of always uh, working uh, in, in some kind of a cyclical fashion where price is always trying to catch up to where the demand is. And sometimes it's going to overshoot and come back. So what demand imbalance arbitrage does is it looks to see where there's a significant imbalance, not where there's just a little bit of an imbalance, we want a significant one where we know, you know, it's not statistically, it's not likely to go any further away from where the demand is. It's got to snap back, right? Um, the, what most people do is they look for opportunities where they say, oh, based on whatever strategy, uh, uh, approach, uh, system, uh, technology alert, it doesn't matter. They look for something that kind of qualifies as, let's give an example, like uh, just a simple double bottom, okay? It's a reversal pattern. Most people know what a double bottom is. And so, if you use a double bottom strategy, you're going to have one that kind of meets your requirements. Okay, this is a qualified double bottom. The problem is you don't know before you enter if that double bottom that you've qualified up front based on the rules is actually going to fall through and hit its target profitably, right, until you've had to commit. Well, with demand and balance arbitrage, the analysis that we're doing before we execute that is market vulnerability. We're seeing where the market's vulnerable. So if we see this opportunity, it looks like a double bottom, it looks really great, right? But it has room to continue stretching further away from demand. That's not a high quality, high probability scenario. So when we, so, and, and what it is, is kind of like the best way I can explain this. If you get into a car, there's a lot of complicated uh, technology, uh, um, mechanical items and things that are happening underneath the hood and uh, on the other side of the dashboard. All we need to see really is the gas gauge and you know whether you know the car is overheating, right? And so what that does is it tells me, well, if I have a quarter of tank of gas in my car and I intend to take a 250 mile you know long road trip, instantly that visual indication that there's a quarter tank of gas tells me there's not enough fuel to carry me forward 250 miles. I don't have to sit there driving my car nervously waiting to see when the car might, you know, put her out and then all of a sudden it stops and I'm stuck because I have not have gas because I can see before I get in. So demand and balance arbitrage works the same way. You, we, we have, I've taken all of the demand factors, the eight demand factors and combined them so that the combined impact, I can see it visually like a gas gauge that tells me uh, for instance, uh, a few months ago, uh, Tesla was up at around $1,000. It, it had gone up before, uh, pulled back, and came right back up to the $1,000 level. Well, what's interesting is demand, what happened was when, when price went up to $1,000, demand didn't just kind of come down and fall off a little bit. 
it plummeted down towards near the 700. And what you see visually with my method is you see visual, again, like, like a gas gauge, you'd see this visual indication that, wow, demand and its visual indication is at the same place it was, okay, when price was back at, at 700. So you can see visually that demand is over the 700 level, yet price is up at $1,000. And it's at a, and we're talking about a very timely uh, uh, analysis, not, it, well, it's eventually gonna come down. No, it's, we know that within one or two days or one or two or three bars, depending on the time frame, that Tesla is gonna have to come down 30% to come back to meet with demand. Mm. And so I don't have to guess. It's not, I don't have to doubt. I don't have to wonder. There's no hoping. Hope's not a strategy, right? I know with objective confidence and reliability that Tesla is going to have to come down. And that's Tesla. But, you know, for those who trade Forex, it's the same exact thing with the euro dollar or, or the pound or, or the yen, or it doesn't matter what you're trading, whether it's cryptocurrency, whether it's futures, it, it, it doesn't really matter. Options, right? With options, people who have interest in options, they have to think about the fact that the underlying asset is what they're going to be impacted by. So wouldn't it make sense to understand what the underlying asset is going to do? And how do we do that? Let's find out where the real time demand is. So we know whether the price is at an area where it's actually ripened and giving us a, a good opportunity, or it's going to be kind of a 50, 60%, you know, that's, which is aggressive, right? Wouldn't I rather be right 80, 90% of the time? Because if you are, now you have a level of control, which is very important. And you have a level of certainty that I'm going to be right at least eight, nine times out of 10, right? And when you have control, you have certainty. Now you've got, how did you get, you got that from obje having objective clarity, right? And now you have an, an ability to have consistent, reliable outcomes that then produce your confidence. And, then, and if you're confident, you're going to have peaceful profits, right? Because when you're yeah. confident, and you're right, eight, nine times out of 10, yeah. it's a peaceful experience. You're not stressed, right? Makes sense? Yeah. Well, you kind of answered my next question because I was going into that. You kept alluding to the ability to forecast where price is going to go. And you said, oh, I can yes. do it with confidence. And that, then you started saying, oh, I can do it with confidence 80 to 90% of the time. Okay, those are correct terms that really blow my mind. Okay, I'm sure that our listeners are kind of saying, he can confidently tell me where price is going to go 80 to 90% of the time. How can you do that? Correct. So what's, the, what's so interesting is, is when I realized that the market has environmental factors and very similar to weather, weather has all these environmental factors. You and I can't walk out under a clear blue sky and all of a sudden experience rain pouring over us, right? We're going to first see clouds rolling in. Mm. They're going to get darker. The temperature is going to change, right? The pressure, right, the, is going to change. Barometric pressure is going to change. All these things start to come in. And just because it's cloudy doesn't mean it's going to rain. You have to have the right conditions that actually cause those clouds to produce rain. So suddenly now we're realizing, oh, there's these all these factors. And when this, this, and this happen, we have an 80%, 90% forecast that it's going to, we're going to have a storm coming or a hurricane. And the market's the same way. So when I realized what factors are creating the environmental conditions, which are all form demand, right? Well, now I have a grasp on two very important points. I can identify the factors that impact price movement, but most importantly, the fact that it actually takes time to develop. Mm -hmm. If I can identify the factor that moves price and that it doesn't just appear and disappear like magic, it actually evolves, right? So it takes time to build. That's what makes it forecastable. The trick is when people think, well, if you can forecast the market, then you should be, you know, you should be making money hand over fist. You should be in the market all the time. Not so. Um, in the same way that when we can forecast a storm, we have the wisdom to know that we shouldn't be running our errands out in the middle of a storm. We should wait because that's when the car can hydroplane. That's when the, you're under pressure. Uh, you could, you, maybe you won't be able to see through your windshield because it's pouring so hard. There's a lot of factors that occur that increase the risks dramatically. Being under pressure and nervous alone, no matter how experienced you are as a driver, you're driving your car for 40 years, you're bound to slip and make a mistake out of your nervousness, right? 
And so you, you might pump the, you know, your brakes a little bit too fast and then your car loses and spins out of control because it's so wet, you know, that's the, you can treat it like you would on a dry pavement. And so what happens is we use these factors to know, and this goes back to this rubber band analogy. We start to realize that I can forecast price. It doesn't mean that the opportunity I'm seeing is necessarily tradable. Now, why? One, there might be too much risk I have to take into account where I might have to risk, let's say two or $3 to make a dollar. That's not good odds. I don't want that kind of risk reward ratio. I want at least a, a minimum of a one-to-one -one or better. So I don't want to risk more than a dollar to make at least a dollar or more, right? So we don't want to carry large drawdowns. That gets eliminated instantly, right? And, and so we want to have that one-to-one -one so that when we have a, an 80 or 90% win rate, it's a true win rate. It's not, oh, I, I, I hold on to these large drawdowns and hope it comes back. And if it's in a bull market, it ends up recovering. I got lucky. And so that's why I'm always right. And I have a high win rate. No, that's really a false understanding of what a true win rate is. So if you say you're 90% uh, win rate, but you're, you're, you sit and hold 10, 15, 20% drawdowns, that's, you know, and you're stressed. That capital is paralyzed. You can't use it for anything else. Be productive. That's not an honest win rate either. But when we talk about a one to one or better, now that changes everything because now what we're doing is doing this. We're able to see that okay, I can get a one to one, or maybe a one and a half to one. But if I see that the conditions in the market are very stormy, guess what that tells me? If I engage this opportunity, I'm going to be stressed. I'm going to be put under pressure. It'll, it'll put me in the same frame of mind, the same mindset I'm going to have as if I have an important meeting and I'm driving my car and, and, I, and I really can't be late, but I am late. I'm going to be aggressive. I'm going to make poor decisions. I'm going to justify and rationalize behaviors I wouldn't otherwise exercise if I wasn't under that pressure. So there's a wisdom to applying this too, which is very important. And this is the other reason why I think it's, I don't really believe in just kind of putting this stuff out like a home study course. There needs to be accountability. There needs to be mentoring. There needs to be some kind of an interaction. Um, and, you know, people fundamentally, the human nature, you know, there's, I always tell people, look at, like, for, for instance, you, Randy, there's you, Randy, and you know yourself as Randy. Okay. Okay. And, and then there's Roger. Okay. So we know ourselves. But then there's our human nature, okay? We often don't really give that much attention. My humanity is often going to drive things in me that I think about, go, what was I thinking? What was I doing, right? It's our human nature. So you have to think about that. So we have to realize if I know that this opportunity looks juicy, but is it one of these super significant imbalances between price and demand? it's only it's it looks decent looks you know it's good well i'm kind of asking for trouble aren't i because it might sit and go backwards on me and now i'm nervous and now i'm going to start to take my eyes off the objectivity and i'm going to start to question myself and i'm going to put myself through i'm going to negotiate my mind and i'm going to confuse myself i'm not going to get you know i'm going to be able to kind of trip trip over myself and i'll make bad decisions well guess what happens when you make bad decisions now we're angry now we're frustrated now we're it stings and now we want to make up for that. It's very difficult not to uh, not to get stuck in this deteriorated cycle that goes backwards on us. So to avoid that, we want to have the wisdom to say, okay, I want to, I want, I want the ripen 10 to 20 percent of the opportunity. So I might sit for 10 hours, two hours in the morning every day, five days a week, or in the evening. And maybe in those 10 hours, I've seen a bunch of opportunities, but I'm saying no to 80, 90 percent. So I'm only active maybe half an hour, an hour, two hours at the most out of 10 hours. So th that's why I also encourage people not to spend more than two or three hours a day because they're going to burn out. It's a mental exercise. You know, you get tired mm -hmm. and you start to get kind of loopy, right? So it, it allows us to have this peaceful engagement. So forecasting with an 80, 90% consistency really comes from about six years ago, Randy, six years ago, July two of 2016, I had looked at five years worth of all of my trade reviews and I'd realized conservatively I had oh, at no less than 16,000 individual trades I'd reviewed in five years over a wide spectrum of, of clients who came to me from some of them were zero experience, total beginners. Some of them were professionals, 20, 25 year professionals and everyone in between. And it didn't matter what background or experience, but those who are diligent at applying the methodology as I taught it, 
I didn't see a single person have less than an 80% win rate with a one-to-one -one or better risk-reward ratio. So I knew that was how I established the data set. Now, that's how I found out. And then now today, it's you know six years later. So we're talking 11 plus years. Wow. Same data. I still haven't seen anyone fall behind that when they're really applying the methodology as I teach it. And so that's how I know 11 years, and I now I've got what 30, 40,000 individual trades I've reviewed. I've never seen anything less than, than an 80% win rate. And actually, that's a rounded down average, if I want to be honest, which is hard to believe. But I got to tell you, I mean, it is what it is. And um, here's, the, here's what's crazy that has gone through all of the different market environments we've seen in 11 years, right? All mm. the, we've seen multiple crashes, which, which I've called live in front of a, a live global audience before right. and after. So it's like, that's not anything I can fake or, or cheat. It's in real time. Um, and, and we do everything in real time. And what's just amazing is that since 2010, when I developed this initially for myself, I had no intention to teach this. It was just after people started asking, how come you've got all this free time? And, you know, I tell them, and, and then one lady started, it started with one lady who asked me to teach her son and it kind of snowballed. More people started asking, would you be willing to teach me? And it turned into what I'm doing, but I, it wasn't anything I started to think about doing. It was just for myself when I created the methodology. But back in 2010 is when I kind of put the final capstone and was done with it. I have never, you know, all these market environments, all the different time frames, all the different asset classes, I've never once fixed it. I've never once modified it. I've never once tweaked it. I've never once updated it. It's the same thing. It's because it's built on principles that never change, which are what? Principles of demand. Price will always lag behind and follow and chase after pr uh, uh, price will always follow demand. So wherever mm -hmm. demand goes, that's where price is going to follow. Mm -hmm. And so that's a principle in life like gravity. And you have to, people have to learn to respect that because if you don't respect gravity, for instance, <laughs> you're going to learn the hard way, you're better, <laughs> right? Yeah. So it's just, that's always there. And that's kind of how we uh, arrive at that figure. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, you talked about the fatal flaw earlier. You meant you brought that up and yeah. mentioned it a couple of times uh, that it's inherent to all trading systems, uh, methodologies and yeah. so forth. Um, is it in the demand imbalance arbitrage also? Is it become a problem with that or how does it relate? So that's a great question. So demand imbalance arbitrage is actually the, the method of how we're identifying and executing a position, right? We're identifying where there's a significant imbalance in, in, in demand uh, versus where price is, right? Um, well, because it's based on those pr of the principles of, of demand, those are unchanging, right? So, and what's really underneath demand and balance arbitrage is something called market vulnerability analysis. So it's that analysis that's allowing us to take advantage and execute demand and balance arbitrage. We're arbitraging or taking advantage of the difference between price and demand for that low risk, high probability profit opportunity. Well, market vulnerability analysis is actually doing just that. You're analyzing where the vulnerabilities are in the market. So what happens is rather than having a setup that says, you know, when this and this happen, that's a good buying opportunity. No, this is actually analyzing what are the environmental factors doing? What is that telling us? Are clouds rolling in? Are they getting darker? Is the barometric pressure rising or, 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 or decreasing, right? We're, we're looking at the factors that are going to produce an outcome, a nice sunny day, a cloudy day, or is there a storm coming? Is it a hurricane? Or is it a condi conditions for a tornado? See, those things can't, they don't just pop up out of nowhere. Like I said, they, they take time to evolve. And so with market vulnerability analysis, which is the engine behind demand and balance arbitrage, it's actually measuring the changes in the market. And so the inherent flaw is simply this. Anytime we develop a strategy, whether it's with moving averages or it's with something else or when the stars line up, it doesn't matter. What happens is you, you forward test it live. It's always based on the current market conditions and historic market conditions. Now, here's the problem with that. Are you the same person today as you were five years ago? No, neither am I. None of us. We're always evolving. That is a unique characteristic trait of the market. It's always evolving. 
So what happens is what strategy I have now that's working for me and been making me money, at some point, the market's going to evolve just enough as it always has and always continue to, to do. It will evolve just enough where that strategy will start to work inconsistently, poorly, or not at all, right? Mm. Things change. So what we need is a model that measures those changes because then that acts like a risk filter. Now, whatever strategy I want to apply, I can run it through this risk filter because it's going to tell me what demand is doing in real time. So whatever gives me my signal to buy, sell, whether it's an alert, whether it's a newsletter, whether it's someone telling me you should buy, I don't care. Whether it's a profit telling you, hey, I'm prophesying that you're going to, you know, you can go, well, let's put some objectivity to that subjective uh, you know, <laughs> call out here. Okay. And so you put this risk filter, it's going to tell you with no less than a proven statistical 80 to 90% level of accuracy. So you have an 80 to 90% accuracy in your analysis. So, you know, you can be confident that before you commit capital, now you can and will know before you do anything, whether the opportunity you're seeing has an 80, 90% chance of actually hitting its target or not, rather than being on the flip side of that, where it looks like a good opportunity, looks juicy, but I don't know if it's going to hit its target until I commit capital. No, before you commit capital, you'll know. And that's what gives you that peaceful experience rather than that stressful, because where does stress and fear come from? Those fear motivated actions are coming from unknowns, the uncertainty. Well, if you eliminate the uncertainty, you have total objectivity, you have total clarity. Well, now you've got confidence and you have the ability to be consistent. And since it's built on principles that are always going to be there, just like gravity, then you know that you're never going to have a version 2.0 or next new thing or what's working next or what's working now. That's all done, right? So that, that's really how we accomplish that. Hopefully that, that answers that. Uh, well, it does, clearly... you know, because it kind of takes uh, another approach where many traders who rely upon these uh, statistics and the indicators are always looking for the next best thing. Something works for now, but then it stops working. Okay, so now they've got to move on to something else. They buy the next thing that some talking heads sitting there trying to tell them, oh, this is going to get you success. They take it. It works for them for a while, and then it starts failing, and then they have to move on to the next one. So it's like yeah. it's an unending cycle that just on and on. So what you talked about, the, the flaw that's in the system really is in the entire market in general. It's changing. And no system can encapsulate the entire market all the time without constant updates. And yeah, so that's a really Randy, good point that you brought. And, and Randy, you know, a lot of people think that they, um, they all, you know, they have to have this good trade psychology. And it's true when you're dealing with that uncertainty and that mm. constant evolution in the market, that's never the same. And mm. so, but when we are measuring those changes, suddenly what happens? You no longer have that uncertainty, right? And so if you don't have uncertainty, what do you need to trade psychology for? Trade psychology is, I don't know what to do, but I got to stick to my rules, you know, no matter what, mm -hmm. stick to your rules. Okay, yeah. well. That's right. I've said that so many rules, times. <laughs> right? Yeah. It, it, you know, but, and, and, and people come to me all the time and say, you know, I, I'm pretty disciplined. I stick to my rules, right? But what's failing isn't you, it's the strategy. So it's, it's not about, I'm, I need to be better at how I apply myself or I need to be, you know, people, and then I've got people who say, well, I think my, my problem really isn't uh, the strategy. It's, it's uh, my ability to stick to the rules. Well, the reason you're struggling with sticking to the rules is because you're dealing with uncertainty, <laughs> right? Because you don't know before what to expect. But if you do, and you know you're right, and you have a historic track record of an 80, 90% level of accuracy for 11 plus years now, now that changes everything, mm -hmm. see? And now stability, reliability, uh, no more disappointment and letdowns you know you know what else actually gets eliminated which is awesome um one of the demand factors is uh what i call a prime liquidity pool a prime mm. liquidity pool is simply this it's uh, a market maker or a broker's ability to know based on their inside data right that the market currently maybe is at this support level and everyone's focused on maybe a support level it's just down here but the market maker or broker knows that there's room for the market to there's a kind of a squishy area where the liquidity that prime pool of liquidity is actually further lower that's the experience that causes people to experience these whipsaws or where 
they feel like this this mar the market is personally out to get them they feel per like persecuted like the broker knows my order and he can't he stop me out and then let the market run without me it you know it feels personal i mean it it it's almost impossible not to feel like it's personal because it just seems like it hits right at the right time and it hits you just it get it just makes you out and but then it goes without you where you were where you had targeted okay this is part of the wisdom of understanding why we don't want just any good looking opportunity when we're because i have some clients that kind of um the raw power and performance gets them so excited it's kind of like they all of a sudden flip into the mindset of a 16 year old who just got a who got their driver's license and dad bought them a brand new two and a half million dollar lamborghini now now what do you think that combination is going to produce <laughs> not a pretty good That's outcome at some point okay <laughs> but it's exciting for a grown adult successful in whatever field that they that they've endeavored in to come into the market and all of a sudden they're given all this control all this clarity this consistency that they prove to themselves in this conference all of a sudden I'm seeing opportunities ever. I can forecast the market. And they, it's like, but, but you've been told you don't want every opportunity. And, and if you focus on these opportunities, you're so focused on the opportunity, you're missing the fact that the methodology and, and the process, the analysis saying, I can stretch all the way out here, right? That's that whipsaw. And so focus on quality, not quantity. And guess what happens when you focus on quality, not quantity? In my experience, I don't have a single person in 11 plus years where when they focused on the process and they focused on applying what I've taught them diligently and the most important thing, they focused on quality, not quantity. Not a single one didn't beat their expectations and their hopes and desires before they'd met me. And they did it with greater ease, greater comfort, and, and consistency, sustainable, reliable experiences, both in two things, in performance, their outcomes, but also their experience. So they're not stressed along the way. They're not wrestling and fighting with the market. It's not this gut-wrenching stress. It's actually, it's like no more challenging than a crossword puzzle or a video game, right? It's a healthy, positive thing, but it's, it's not negative, right? And it keeps the mind sharp. You're engaged. It's, it challenges you, but in a healthy way. And, and it's so you start to enjoy the, the experience rather than just being motivated by what the outcome mm -hmm. is and you're putting up with something that you wish you didn't have to put up with. It's not healthy. And, and that's not sustainable, frankly, for anybody. Mm -hmm. Well, and that intrigues me too, because you, you mentioned that you can do all of that in two, maybe no more than three hours a day of study of or looking correct. at the markets. Because if you haven't been able to see with your 80 to 90% clarity the market's setting up within that time frame, then then you're wasting your time trading, in other words. Well, let me tell you what's going to happen. You, you start to get bored because this is now, it's not Randy, it's not Roger, it's not Bob, it's not Jessica. It's it's our humanity. It's our human nature. It starts to, to get weary. It gets tired, right? You know, um, we there's wear and tear. It You know, that's why we need to sleep. That's why some of us need to take a nap. You know, it's so that's why I'm saying so the, the and, and an energy drink is not a wise way to keep myself going because <laughs> my judgment is still not going to be the same way. Mm -hmm. So there's a wisdom to just saying, you know what, it didn't meet my criteria today. It's OK. Another will come along. Mm -hmm. And here's something people don't realize. So. With having a grasp on where the demand is in real time, you suddenly are no, no longer limited or restricted to just higher time frames or a specific time frame or a specific symbol. No, people find themselves slowly moving down to smaller time frames that have more frequent movements, right? The smaller the time frame, the more uh, movement you see. And interestingly, people go, well, but aren't the smaller time frames more volatile, more noisy, more risky? less predictable well if you know where the demand is and you're seeing price moving away from demand whether it's a one minute chart or a 10 second chart or one hour chart it's all the same thing i can show you two charts that look very similar and one will will be a, a 12 month chart right and the other one below it looks pretty similar to, to, to the 12 month chart except it's only 12 minutes or 12 hours right so 
that says a lot because that now introduces the concept of fractals where what I see happening on, on a 12 month cycle, why should I wait 12 months to earn 8% when I can do it in, let's say, you know, 12 weeks or 12 consecutive hours or not, in, not consecutive hours, but 12 hours over the week, you know, you understand it's by taking advantage of the cycles. And so um, those smaller cycles enable us to come in and out of the market with great efficiency, um, maintaining our confidence, our peace of mind, our clarity and our, our consistency. Wow. And, 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 and this, it going back real quickly, just so, so when you're able to actually engage the market in smaller timeframes, um, you can make 2% on your account in a matter of five minutes or 15 minutes or half an hour or an hour. Well, shoot, how many two minute, how many 2% trades do I need, you know, to have an, a real impact? I mean, if I did 2% once a week, that's 8% a month compounded. That's hundred percent a year on a part-time effort. So isn't it wise to just kind of pull off a little bit? Let's not put myself in a stressful mode and why be aggressive when you have that kind of potential, right? Most people don't need more, you know, most people will be happy with 20%, 30%, 50%, you know, hundred percent, you know, all of a sudden it's, so this is why it also kind of takes the edge off this fear of missing out, this FOMO, fear of missing out. Right. When you realize you have that kind of grasp, that kind of control, and that there's always an infinite, endless stream of opportunity, another's going to come along, you just say, that's okay, I'll, I'll pass, right? And, and that's why you, you're actually, <laughs> the greatest thing about this is less really is more. People are used to like, oh, I want, if I want more, I have to work harder. Mm -hmm. I have to spend more time. No, here, the more time you spend, the more tired you become. Your judgment becomes impaired. And you're more likely to make a mistake. So no, keep yourself a piece. Go do something else. Go be productive. Go have fun. Go, you know. And so that's what I, what I really, even those who become full-time, hey, don't go beyond three hours. They will kind of do four hours and start to negotiate with me. <laughs> like, like, if you have that's like, worth your while, maybe yeah. if you're full-time. But you know what? Really try to keep it two to three hours. You know, enjoy life doing something else. Yeah. <laughs> Have a life. <laughs> well, I'm, sh I'm sure in all the spouses will say, yep, 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 we're ready to that. <laughs> but anyway. Oh, absolutely. Um, you kept saying uh, about your students and you said over all these years, you really haven't had anyone who's had an issue with keeping at least 80% accuracy or better. Um, how can you guarantee this level of accuracy and and success for your clients? So that's a great question. Um, in the beginning, I, I, I never had a guarantee, didn't, didn't know I could have one. And it was, it was really after that shocking data that I, that I, that I sat and worked out and, and got to. And I was like, what? You know, 16,000 trades, is a, that's a huge sample size. Right? That's a huge data set. And dozens of clients from zero total beginners. I mean, I, I've had housewives that were just like basically homemakers. They're now in their 60s, no academic background, no job experience, nothing in finance, no investing experience. I just, the only market they knew of was the supermarket. <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh, financial market. Oh, there's a market for financial. Yeah, that's the stock. Market. Oh, 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 I suppose. Okay. You know, that level from that to everything in between, it, it didn't matter. Um, so when I saw now, here, here's, the, here's the kicker, okay? I always say, those who are applying the methodology as I teach it. Now, are there people that are stubborn? Or are there people that kind of you know, struggle with uh, curiosity uh, that they've got to kind of uh, scratch that itch? And you know, or do, are, they, you know, do they are they distracted? That's an entirely different thing. You know, that's, um, you know, if you take a 16 year old and he can't help but drive the car fast, right? They're gonna have, tickets are going to have accidents, right? So you, you want to drive a vehicle. This is this process is a vehicle that gets you someplace, right? Um, it's designed. So if I gave you a Lamborghini, it's set for a very specific type of performance. Now, how you drive it is completely up to you. You could drive it recklessly or you could drive it in a very mature, stable way and really enjoy it and know when, when it's time, there's a time and a place for that power, right? That raw power mm. that, that is behind the wheel of a Lamborghini. So there's a wisdom to this, which is really one of the reasons that led me to actually um, setting up an application and, a, and, a, and an interview and an evaluation uh, period bef before I even accept a client because I want to make sure there's a good fit. But when I got that data, I realized as long as they're doing what I asked them to do, it's not me who tells them, 
they'll know by themselves, I'm mm-hmm. not doing what you told me to do. You know, or is that the methodology? No, I see, I see what you, because when they learn, it, it's like, I, if I give you a bunch of Lego blocks and, and you kind of put two things kind of that don't fit together, I, you know, need me to, to, you know, those don't work. Yeah, but, but it kind of helped make the wall larger. Yeah, but that's not, that's going to, I can, it's going to fall. Right? They, they, they've got to be coming together, right? They got to clip together. Yeah, I know that was not a, a wise, yeah, that's not a good way to build a wall. You know, so it's so objective that I've never been able to see a person or have a person where they can kind of come back and tell me that this is not, you, you're failing to deliver on your promise. So that gave me the confidence to be able to go, wow. And I've, and I've since have put it in writing and it's in the training course before they begin practicing. It's on, here's the threshold that this methodology is proven to, pr- to produce w- all the time for those, that's the, that's the key, for those who apply it the way it's meant to be applied. They follow my directions. When they follow my directions, I've never seen this thing fail. So these, and now these are not performance goals. It's just a reference sheet for you to know when you're on track or beginning to fall off track, you should never have a financial goal. They'll have you focus on the wrong thing. Like I got to get through that intersection, come hell or high water. I know it's about to turn red. Okay, but but I think I can make it. That's your, now if you have a habit of running these red lights, uh, you, you're cruising for a bruising at some point, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, eventually. So, take it. No. What we want is to focus on the process. The process is is designed to deliver a set range of performance so the process produces the results so we want to focus on the, on the process and that's how we get that consistency rather than this you know object subjective you know i don't want to make this many trades a day or a week or i want x per month i was talking to a professional last night actually while i'm I, when i came to turkey last night i had met with um uh an introducing broker to a firm and, and they're managing quite a bit of money and and so you know they have the set uh, kind of goal per month and i said that is backwards so you can't you can't have a goal per month for you and for your clients you need to focus on a process that delivers a range of performance that is acceptable mm. and then that process can actually surpass and exceed your expectations but having the backwards focus of i got to get that to intersection i got to make x percent per week or per month that's going to cause you to get into a lot of trouble that's not sustainable like whoa mm. so we're gonna have a follow-up meeting but uh it's it's an interesting uh sh- paradigm shift for a lot of people but mm-hmm. but that's where i can guarantee that and i tell people look you don't have to take my word for it uh, look me up do you see people complaining that i failed to deliver on my promise um it's you know bad news travels 10 times faster than the good news especially today with social media and internet it's just uh just doesn't, you know, it's like, if you come to me, you want to build a cabinet, you're, you're not going to get a bunch of bad reviews that I'm not teaching people how to make cabinets. So if I give you the process, you're going to make a cabinet, right? It's right. a, it's a stable career, right? And so when you come to me, you don't have to try it. You don't have to hope it's going to work for you. It's no, you've come with an 11 year track record of this thing just delivers. It works. If you work it the way it's meant to be worked, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. it's a skill set that you learn and will serve you for the rest of your life. And that's a beautiful thing. It's very comforting. And that's what I love to provide. It's, it's just, it's a privilege to be in my position because I get to experience the love and the gratitude and, and lifelong relationships that get built through this. My, often my clients become like, not only friends, but they become like family to me. They, yeah. Half time, half a dozen times a year, we get clients that come and spend time with us at our, at our home. we got two guest bedrooms and we enjoy them. And not necessarily for work, just to come and just do life together, you know, it's, which is amazing. Right. And we love it. Right. Well, I, I have to confess that, uh, I did look you up and I did do some background research to try to find all the, the dirt and the stuff. And I was, I really was looking it up and, and I have to, I have to say, I, I didn't find anything that I could say how, you know, there's any stones that people are throwing at you at all. So I was really, uh, I was surprised, but out very refreshed to see that there are some real people out there delivering real results and uh, willing to, to share that with other people. Um, before we move on, I have to make a, a full disclaimer here. I just wanted to say that I am a client of Roger and that uh, over two months, about two and a half months ago, I heard him for the first time during a presentation and a speaking event that we were co-panelists on. And um, I was very intrigued by what he had to say because I never heard anyone say they could help you find consistent 
profitability, low stress, peaceful profits. Those are all key words that really caught my attention. And so much so that I started looking into Roger and I even went as far as to say, hey, can I interview a couple of your students just to see you know, how, how they're doing? And lo and behold, everything that Roger said was justified and validated through not only his clients, but through his experience. And so I went ahead and signed up for his program. And uh, you know, I'm a consistently profitable trader before. I'm a 67% trader. Well, what, that, what does that mean? Oh, well, 67% of the time, statistically, I'm taking home profits. And so I'm consistently profitable week after week, month after month. But that's not without stress. And that's not without some pretty big drawdowns. And so I struggled with that. Um, even though I was consistently making money, it wasn't the peaceful profits and all the, the words that he started using, the stress-free environment, um, the feeling like the brokers knew exactly where I was and they came and took me out of the market and then went exactly where I wanted them to go. I felt all of those things. But since Roger and Roger introduced me to his team and I came on board, I started to apply his process. I started to learn a little bit more about uh, demand, our, our imbalance arbitrage and the process that's there. And I'm just seeing, seeing more and more all the time that everything that he's said before is true and that he, his guarantee doesn't even have to be enforced because the proof is in the pudding. It's in the results. And so I can say to you right now that first month that I went in and started trading in a simulated account, my percentages went from 67% up to 97%. And that's, that's on the returns. Now, I'm saying that's the win rates, but win rate really doesn't mean anything unless you're consistently bringing home profit. And so I went from taking- And you're not holding on to large drawdown. Yeah, and I no large drawdown. So I, I was able, to, I think one, I took one loss out of 40 trades. And- that was um, a some very small loss. Uh, so the risk that I had on that was less than 1%. Uh, and, but all of the other profits were 3%, 5%. I had a couple of 12% trades. So, so I was really excited to see that me, you know, I'm a consistent profitable trader. I found a lot of peace and a lot of... Um, stress-free trading in that. And then I usually found them in less than two hours. And so that's to me, astounding and remarkable. And, and I'm not trying to push that. I'm just trying to say that I have Roger on, I'm interviewing him now because what he is saying is true. And he has some very good information to share. And talking about the information, I wanna share that with you now. Um, where can we go to find more information about how you do this and how we can get going with that. There's no sales pitch. This isn't trying to get any money out of you. This is a free link to some uh, education that Roger's put together. Uh, but where can we go to get that information? I think we've got a page so, for that. But yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got, uh, if you want to put up financial markets with an S, financial markets, IQ, okay, dot uh, com forward slash Randy. And Randy, with your permission, may I um, kind of put a before and after in there just for them to kind of see so they 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 know they they bet we just what we've said is exactly what you know we can validate that for them. Do you mind if I do that? Not at all. And that way you guys can kind of see because um, I will tell you, Randy, um, Randy's a straight shooter, which which I love. He said, "Look, I gotta. Here's the thing. This just all sounds too good to be true. And I've been and and Randy, you've been trading since the the eighties, right? Nineteen eighties. Yes, mid eighties. Mm -hmm. Mid eighties. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you've been around. You've seen it all. You you know you know who anyone who should be known. And I mean, you, you know, so you're a leader in the industry, and he really just like I just never seen anyone be able to use these terms and really deliver. Uh, there's a lot of hype and there's a lot of disappointment in the industry. So, and that's why, and I said, you know what, listen, Randy, I got to ask you something. I actually don't normally say, yeah, 
you know, I'll, I'll let you, you know, I'll people talk to, to clients because I don't want my clients to be turn, turn into representatives. That's not their job. That's not what they, they signed up for. But I thought, let me ask you this question. Would you mind if I tell them who you are? Um, and and he, I couldn't believe the level of integrity, honesty, humility, and character that, that Randy showed. And I thought, um, because that's one of the things I look for in, whenever I have a professional come to me. I, I don't, I, I've had professionals come to me that when I look at their marketing and look at that person, that, that's not an honest person. And I, and I go, you know what? I'm sorry. I cannot take you. We, this is not going to be a fit. Um, and so I'm very careful. And I, if you remember in the evaluation, I asked some tough questions, you remember? And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, it, he said, I, yeah, you, I don't mind. I said, okay. And so he talked and he, and he asked my, my clients straight to their face, this, this sounds too good to be true what's been your experience, <laughs> you know? And then, so, you know, I, and, and I'll share that interview with you guys. Uh, and, and let me tell you what, what's, what you're going to find through financialmarketsiq.com forward slash Randy. You're going to be able to access a complimentary mini course primer on demand and balance arbitrage. It's going to answer all the questions anyone's ever asked me in all these years. Uh, it's going to give you all the details with examples uh, it's, it's, it'll explain everything. There's there's people's experiences, and in there you also see Randy's before, you know, kind of skeptical, and then his after, saying, "Wow, I've just proved this to myself. This thing actually does deliver what what this guy has said." And so I want you guys to really understand that this is. I don't have a, a sales page. I don't have a sales pitch. I don't like to sell. I'm not a salesperson. I, I, I'm and and I, Randy, you know, it's I, I'd make millions and make a lot more money with a lot less work if I just sold a home study course, right? You and I know that's the easiest path to, to success and any, but no, I'm actually personally involved because I really care. There's integrity in this because I've been where most people are who come to me. And mm -hmm. I actually just, I'm a people person, I'm extroverted and I, and I enjoy getting to know people and, and building this kind of community that, that I nurture and foster. And so um, when you go through that course, at the end of that, you can see some requirements. If you meet those requirements and you feel this is something you want to pursue, there's a short application, you fill it out, and then you get to set up an evaluation directly with me, not some representative trying to pitch you. No, I'm actually doing an honest to God evaluation. I want you to come with any skepticism dealt with before you meet me. Why? Because you can easily look me up and validate things on your own. You don't need me. I don't want to sell you anything. I want to be able to talk to you and get to know you and you get to know me. And that's how I am with everybody. So when you come, Come prepared. You've done your due diligence. You are, you've looked to make sure I'm not, uh, you know, uh, you know, here today, gone tomorrow kind of a person. You, you see, there's, there's no negative reviews. Know what you're, you're coming into, because then we can talk about uh, whether it's a good fit or not. And if it is a good fit, based on what I understand your particular circumstances and your needs are, we can talk about what options make sense for you. So, so I can kind of personalize my approach and know what you need and be able to deliver that. Because then after that, once we get going. I treat you like a human being, like a person, not some number. Randy, what's been your experience about with, with that, by the way? Have you felt like you're a, just a number or how have you felt? Have you felt like it's been a very personalized interaction, personalized support? What, what's been your experience with the support? I'm curious. I'll be I honest. Like a, I feel like a real team member. Uh, the, not only yourself and the personal interaction that you've given me, but the interaction with the entire community on through your the Facebook page, and the interactions of the with the homework and your support staff have really just given me a lot of uh, confidence that you're going to be there when I need you. That the answers that you're giving me are genuine, and um, I I feel like you're being very sincere and and honest with me. So I feel really good about my experience so far. I'm new still, and so I yeah. just started you trading. Don't feel right. Yeah, I'm sorry. I want to make sure you, you haven't felt that you had a cookie cutter approach to to, no. to your questions. No, or, very, very personalized, personalized, right? Very personalized. Absolutely. So, and that's why I keep this small and that's why I keep this intimate and I make sure that I'm, I can, I, I don't take on more people than I can handle. Uh, I know how much time I've got. I know where I want to spend. I spend plenty of time doing the things I want to do. Um, you know, I've got plenty of time with my wife. Um, this isn't work for me. This is kind of an enjoyable bonus it's a hobby and it really it's an enhancement it's a it's a great way to just be productive in life you know and so um that's what i have and i just want i wanted to share that so that you know you know 
don't worry. There's no, there, there's no sales pitch. There's no awkwardness. There's no pressure. Come learn. It's a complimentary free course. It probably will take you about three to four hours to get through it. And then we can sit down and talk uh, and get to know each other and, and, and see what, uh, what develops from there. So financialmarketsiq.com forward slash Randy. And yeah. uh, look forward to meeting those who uh, come on the other side. I've got that on the screen here. So let me, let me share that real quick. Uh, just to make sure that everyone gets that. So uh, the information is there. Uh, it's, it's, it's a five-day mini course that he's uh, got a link to. It's financialmarketsiq.com slash Randy. Um, everything is free. There's no sales pitch. There's nothing that we're trying to sell you on. You don't need a credit card or anything else that's there. We, we just want to give you the information. And like I said, when I went through this five-day mini course, it was actually a surprise because I learned a lot. Not only is it more than five days, he throws a lot of bonus material in there too. So it's, it's advertised as five days, but I think actually it's nine days worth of information and material and, and things that he's done. So um, I was very pleasantly surprised and not once did they ever try to get my credit card. Not once did they try to sell me or upsell me on anything. So that's uh, very, very good information. So just this alone was worth the uh, attendance to that. So I wanted to make sure you got that uh, information. Yeah, there's a lot of eye-opening insights and paradigm shifts that you're going to learn, you're going to make. Uh, that's going to answer a lot of questions you probably have for many of you who maybe have struggled and wrestled with and been asking for years and don't feel like you ever got a, a, you know, a, a clarity on why does this keep happening? Why does that happen? How come this? All that stuff will get answered. You'll understand, including you know, whipsaws, right? When you know that mm. the, when uh, you have an analysis process that says, no, the, actually there's a prime liquidity pool just below where you think you should put your stop. Well, now you go below that and now you're below where the market maker, the broker can go, right? So guess what? That gets eliminated. So no more getting a whipsaw out of the market and feeling like you're getting personally stop hunted and that goes away too. So it, it eliminates all of the negative experiences and the common traps that are there that people traditionally experience utilizing strictly what have has been taught and is really plagues the industry which is a focus on price the price of things yeah we're going to yeah. look at the de demand and that changes everything for everybody and mm -hmm. and you can some people like to binge watch this you know the, the five to nine days if they want to watch the bonus material it, it takes a few hours it's not it's not a big arduous thing right but so yeah you but, but you'll enjoy it and you'll really learn a lot from it yeah I think so too. Yep, you bet. So um, I think that's about it. Did you did you want to ask me any more questions with regards to my experience or? Yeah, you know, I, I, I'll just, just to kind of, um, I think we kind of already answered, but just to be super clear, anything that sounded too good to be true, have you in fact validated that it actually isn't that I actually do deliver on my promise without yeah. any hype, without any exaggeration? Good. Yeah. Well, uh, that, I'll it, wrap it, this it, up. Has that been your experience? Yes, it has been. It has been my experience, 100%. So I can't say any, anything other, other than that. And I've had very, uh, uh, my peaceful experience in the market is growing. And the amount of stress I experience is going down all the time. And so I'm very, very happy to see that. My wife is very happy to see that. So, so that's good information. Well, I just wanted to uh, summarize some of the major takeaways from our discussion today. I've been kind of taking notes as we've been talking, but uh, you had mentioned something that the financial markets are not random and we know what drives the markets. It's not price, it's demand. And so if we understand demand, then we have a much more confident understanding of where price will be and what the markets are going to be doing. Um, yeah. That uh, most, most everybody, including professionals, have been taught to focus on specific information, indicators, indications of things. And we know that those things are lagging and that if we really focus on where true price is coming from and that's demand, then we know uh, where we're going to be. It makes us more confident on what we're doing. We can always be a step ahead of the market instead of a step behind the market. You talked about 80 to 90% accuracy in price prediction. You talked about 
um, the ability, and this is what changed my mindset, of looking at knowing 80 to 90% of the time that this trade is going to fail. Wow. You know, that takes my 67% strategy, which if I didn't do anything else, but just trade that, that turns it into a 90 plus percent strategy because I'm not taking 90% of those 35% losers I always took, including the big drawdowns. So that's incredible. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting off beat here. Um, let me finish my, my summary. <laughs> so knowing where demand is gives us a lot of frequent, low risk, high opportunity, low stress opportunities to trade with not only confidence, but with consistency. Is, is that all true? Did I summarize it? Is that kind yeah. of what you're saying? One, one million percent, because if, and, and everybody think about this, if you don't have consistency, you have nothing. So, and, and it's not just consistency for a short term, you need reliable, sustainable long-term consistency where you're not going back to the drawing board every so often and looking at what's, what's working now. You know, what's funny, you know, Randy, you'll notice um, as the as the market evolves, there'll be there'll be seasons, there'll be cycles where the market really is not doing really well. It's it's the poor conditions. Mm -hmm. Well, with any other approach, when the market shifts, you know that's no longer favorable. You start to lose more, right? Mm -hmm. Well, with this, you don't start losing more. You just start trading less. You preserve your capital. So there's a focus on capital mm -hmm. preservation, which is critical. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to make money and give it back. We want to make money and keep it. Mm -hmm. that's what allows us to be productive and to grow into something meaningful and impactful in a very mm -hmm. reasonable time. And one last thing I noticed in, during my training that a lot of times I get scared out of a trade only to find out that it turns around and just continues on and goes right to my profit targets. And so I've learned through the process that where demand is, that's where price is going to go. And even though it's going against me, I've got confidence that's going to go to my target and not get shaken out of the trade. And that's Bingo. immeasurably. So, and, and that's improved my bottom line immensely as well. So. Yeah. Cause you don't have to second guess yourself. You've got objective data that mm -hmm. tells you, Hey, I've got reliable 80% statistical probability. This is going to do what it's going to say it's going to do. Okay. And your maximum stop loss is going to be 2% or less of your account. So it's not like you don't have this massive risk. That's a huge shift as well. That's a big plus. Yes, it yeah. is. I have to say, well, that's awesome. Well, um, I think that's about it for our time. We don't take any more of that time. Uh, we had uh, quite a few questions asked uh, that I was able to answer while you were talking and other things. So if there are other questions here before we head out, uh, I'd be glad to entertain those now. If you can uh, give us a few more minutes of your time. That would be great. Um, I don't yeah, see anything a, coming I, through. What's I think uh, it, it was great how, how you, you you kind of uh, gave him that little surprise uh, twist at the end. So by the <laughs> way, guys, <laughs> I, I'm telling you from direct experience, that, which is which is not something that you often hear from people. So that's a real yeah. bonus. <clears throat> that, I think that speaks volumes. And I would yeah. say, do you, um, 90 percent of my clients are word of mouth referrals from existing clients. About 10 percent are come from like me from a podcast or someone who just kind of wants to they're impressed with what we're doing and they want to help their audience and they'll, yeah. they'll share. But but 90 percent, that says a lot by, on, on its own. And so uh, mm -hmm. all in 11 years plus, it's been a it's been a, a wonderful, just a delightful time for myself and, and my wife who's part of my life. We've been married for six years and we don't have kids. So we, <laughs> we love to love on our clients and they're kind of like our kids, even though Two thirds of all of you are parents, but still, <laughs> I, I got a father's heart. My wife is, has has a mother's heart. She's very nurturing. We love, yeah. so we love when we uh, when we get to meet face to face, and so um, so that that'll be that'll be something to look forward to. Yeah, awesome. So let me type this in for there. There you go, Willie. All right. Well, good. I think that should conclude it. Um, if there aren't any more questions, I just saw I just answered the last one that came through. Then. Uh, Wow, thank you for coming to us live from um, uh, Turkey. And uh, Turkey. you just got there just two yeah. days ago. Yeah, I'm here in uh, Charlotte, That's North right. Carolina. Yeah. And uh, so we appreciate you uh, giving us your time. And uh, if we, this has been recorded, 
We will be replaying this broadcast uh, in a couple of hours. So thank you very much. We appreciate uh, everyone who attended today. And Roger, thank you very much for taking your time to share with us. This was a lot of fun. It was my pleasure. Thanks, Randy. It was You're great. Great to see you again here. All right. Take, take care. care. Have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Cheers.